So tell me what's inspiring for you about science, about the practice of science? Oh, everything. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> for my stuff, it's, it's I, I find it incredibly creative, science. I think it's incredibly beautiful and people don't realise that what we're looking at every day, whether it be through a microscope or, in my case, out diving a lot, um, I just I have to pinch myself half the time saying, this is what I get to see every day. This is beautiful. It's, and it's also thinking outside the box, designing experiments or, um, yeah, you've just got to think differently and think creatively and that's very appealing to me. It's, people always see it as a nerdy little, you know, you've got to um, sit there at your desk and do calculations and all this. It's actually a completely creative, um, beautiful field, I think. Mm -hmm. So. And then, of course, yeah, it's very, very important, I think, as well, to, to be able to conduct the research, but also to be able to then communicate it and uh, get it out there in a way that's actually going to make change. So, yeah. yeah, it's kind of it's almost the starting point to, to change, I think. Yes, mm. yes, I agree. Mm. So, tell us now about your research. What's your, do you have a question or, yeah? I do, I yeah. I, I look at uh, high latitude temperate coral. So it's, it's very topical at the moment with what's happening on the Great Barrier Reef. Um, and, but I'm studying the corals that we find all the way down here uh, in and around Sydney Harbour. Uh, so these corals uh, are surviving in quite extreme conditions. It's an urbanised uh, mm -hmm. harbour and it's also cold water, or they experience quite a large temperature range, and most corals really just survive within this narrow little uh, window of, of temperature and, and light, and, and the corals down here are surviving in far more extreme conditions. Um, so the idea is that if we study these, these seemingly robust, tolerant uh, corals surviving this far south, uh, we can understand a great deal more about what a coral needs to be to be resilient and tolerant. And of course, this links back to the, the whole issue of climate change and coral reefs are at that front line. We're seeing that now. Um, they're the first indicators really that something's terribly wrong. And, and yeah, we hope as part of the Future Reefs Lab here at ETS, we hope to, yeah, really just understand what makes a tolerant coral um, and there's yeah we just we're just starting to scratch the surface with that there's um, yeah with with the warming of uh, up north on the Great Barrier Reef there's this uh, idea as well that corals are migrating further south either they can adapt or they need to move and with the East Australian current um, there's a potential for Sydney to become a, a refuge environment for some species uh, but we're just not sure uh, what the, the various resilience and tolerances are mm -hmm. of many species. Mm -hmm. So trying to, to fill in, yeah, these, these odd weird ones down here may teach us a lot about, yeah, what a, a robust coral is, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. I guess the obvious question a lot of people might ask then, so what, you know, how is that going to mm -hmm. help us? Because, of course, we're so concerned about mm -hmm. our health and our future. Well, yeah. is, that an, is that the wrong question? Maybe people don't realise that coral reefs around the world support billions of people. Um, so there is a direct human link there. It's not, you know, there's always a, a reason to save biodiversity and wildlife because it deserves it. But then if you, yeah, if you need that human reason then they're incredibly valuable ecosystems and uh, the Great Barrier Reef um, is, is more valuable to Australia in terms of uh, tourism I guess but also culturally and socially 